Francisco annihilates Jacksonville. So there are these moments. There are certain things in the NFL that are true. Andy Reid on a bye. Shanahan uh, rested healthy team on a bye. Should we look at this for Jacksonville? I, I, I'm i a little bothered by it because I, it's okay if a Seattle or Detroit plays Lamar Jackson. There's nothing in the league like him. NFC teams yeah. have no idea. They're, he's like 17 and one. But you're at home. Uh, you were rested. You were healthy. That game was never competitive. Like I, and I've been a huge Jags fan. I got to be honest with you. I didn't like what I saw. I, I think it was a perfect storm. I, I wouldn't put the stamp of approval that this Jags team is going to go to the AFC championship game, but I'm going to give them a little bit, throw that thing in the trash can. They got the 49ers coming off three losses. Uh, their John Lynch said last week, their team was looked like they were running with concrete in their shoes. They look so slow. They were desperate for a buy. Everyone needed to take a deep breath. Their defensive line, Colin was really underachieving. You know, the, when the Yankees lose, they're paying all their hitters to hit home runs. When they don't hit home runs, they're just going to lose. When the 49ers don't sack the quarterback, the amount of money they have the highest paid defensive lineman in the league in Bosa. They gave Hargrave 40, you know, $20 million a year, 40 guaranteed this offseason, the highest paid free agent defensive lineman. They just trade for Chase Young. Er Eric Armstead makes $16 million a year. They're all in on that group. When that group doesn't dominate, and I know statistically they were like leading the league in pressures, it did not look the same. What I witnessed today, Nick, Nick Bosa is a good example. He was statistically pressures wise having a good year. But when you watched him, you went, he doesn't look like TJ Watt and Miles Garrett right now because a great pass rusher. It doesn't matter what you throw at him, right? That's why Belichick always pushes back when people compare someone to Lawrence Taylor. He goes, you could throw seven people at him. He's hung over. He's still sacking the quarterback. So th there are no excuses. Now you put Chase Young over there. Nick Bosa looked like the $125 million man again. And if that's the case, the, the Niners are potent because Fred Warner is the best linebacker in the league. Hufunga is a fantastic playmaker. So to me, that defensive line, they are built to play from ahead. Brock Purdy today, he's... If he doesn't turn the ball over, he's a really explosive quarterback. He averaged yeah. over 11 yards of completion. They push the ball down the field. Yes. He is not afraid to throw the ball down the field. And they have made a or NFC championship runs with dinking and dunking and playing defense. So when you push the ball down the field, that's the team that was kicking the shit out of everybody the first five weeks. But it starts with the defense. And when their defense dominates like that, like Trevor Lawrence, you know, kind of went to a shell. But I... I got news for you. I think besides like Mahomes and Josh Allen and maybe Lamar, most people are getting destroyed and they have no shot. And even those guys might lose if that's the performance. But Trevor Lawrence becomes much more pedestrian when you're peppering him every play, which the 49ers did. You know, it's it's funny. Um, you know, for years, the Ravens and the Niners have had these like constant uh, injuries in camp and in preseason. And you just wait for them to get healthy. And I and I wonder the 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 two downsides to Shanahan's style. Number one, half the league is using it now, so the element of surprise. Now he's the genius behind it, right? So it's it's copycat versions of that offense, but it, there's less of an element of surprise. A lot of people are using it, so his window for a couple of years, nobody's doing it. I'm doing it. That's over. Yeah. So that hurts a little, uh, and that's why quarterback becomes so valuable because in these close playoff games, it's just it's a play by a Herbert. It's a play by a Mahomes or a Burrow. Like it's a play. The second thing is that physicality is really the trademark of his dad and Kyle. And we got another, you know, eight weeks regular season, six, seven weeks regular season. And I watched them today and I said, that version, that's the best team in the league. Yeah. That's the best team in the league. But even their practices are intense. Their entire culture, like Baltimore, is intense. Baltimore and San Francisco, there's a reason they're always hurt. And I look at the Niners today and I thought, if you gave me that team, yeah, that they're going to get to the NFC Championship. But but I wonder, and you knew this team very well, is that can can Kyle, can you take the foot off? Can you give uh, McCaffrey a week off? Can you rest Debo? Is it in them? No. The schedule's not no. I, it's not in them. No. So it's like you're you're asking, you know, you marry the you mar you marry the party animal and then you're upset that he's the party animal. That's what attracted you to the party animal. It's like this is who they are. I just don't know if they'll be healthy by the end. They never feel like they are. Yeah, Ky Kyle's established who he is. I mean, he he will run Christian McCaffrey into the ground because that's his best player. And I think you saw today a lot why do the Eagles win so many games the last couple of years? Cuz for the most part, AJ Brown, DeVonte Smith, Dallas Goddard have been on the field. And no team's going to have three better players than that. And they, that's been the difference in a lot of their wins right now, whatever they're eight and one. Well, the 49ers, you remove Trent Williams, 
who's basically like Shaquille O'Neal in the NFL in his prime, right. and Debo Samuel, who becomes their second best player behind McCaffrey and George Kittle, you know, and Brandon Ayuk, it, they're unstoppable. But you remove those two guys, as you saw the last couple of weeks, I, they become a little more pedestrian, and their margin for error is a lot slimmer. But to me, Kyle is wired like a guy that would have been in the 80s. They would have been coaching against Buddy Ryan and Bill Parcells and Bill Walsh. Yeah. He would have fit. He would have had a lot in common. You know, Kyle's viewed as this young guy with his whole crew. He's an old soul. He, he, to me, he has much more in common with Belichick and Pete Carroll, guys in their 70s, in terms of philosophically the way he looks at football, which makes sense. What did he grow up around? Mike Shanahan in the 80s and 90s in the NFL, being at practice, being around that. And Mike Shanahan was notoriously somewhat of a conservative coach. Why? Running game first. And like you said, the difference also, Kyle and some of these other guys, they all run the same plays. Kyle does have better players. There's a collegiate element where, yeah, a lot of teams run certain things in college, but do you have Alabama or Ohio State's personnel? Because when he's rolling out Debo and he's rolling out McCaffrey and he's rolling out Ayuk, it's it's not really a fair fight. And, and listen, the Jags are pretty good. Like the Jags have a lot of good offensive personnel. They, they, they right. couldn't even begin to sniff the, the group that came in motivated. That's the other thing. This is a group of guys that have won a lot of playoff games. Everyone's, you know, dragging them through the mud, and rightfully so. They've been pretty embarrassing the last couple of weeks. They they came out. They they probably would have beat any team in the league today, given what well, was on the line. And and let's be honest about Jacksonville. So I've seen them get uh, hammered by San Francisco. Can't beat Kansas City. I still think they're a baby step away. I agree. It's not a giant step from from being Cincinnati. Um, I just don't think they're there yet. So, um, you know, and the, and the other thing is, uh, I, I like Trevor Lawrence. I, I, I love college football so much that I think, you know, part of me, I, I don't think Trevor's as good as Andrew Luck, but I think he's really, really good. I don't think Caleb Williams is probably as good as Andrew Luck, maybe as good as Trevor. But one of the things that Luck and uh, Trevor Lawrence share in common, and this is one of the criticisms I've heard about both early, but I didn't think it was, I wasn't going to question it on the air. Do they live for football? They love playing it. Andrew Luck gave up the sport. Has no, there's no fallacy here that anybody thinks. Oh, he misses it dearly. Trevor Lawrence has said publicly, like I, I love playing football, but it doesn't define me. GMs and owners don't want to hear that. Coaches don't want to hear that. And sometimes, and I think Trevor's a great competitor, but I, I, I do look at sometimes Trevor Lawrence, and I don't see quite the fire I would love. But I mean, I mean, I, who am I to say that? But Brady is 44, six he rings. Said, Colin, he, Colin, he said it. He said it once upon a time. He said football is not everything to me. Or what I, I might be butchering his exact quote, but remember around the draft. Yeah. yeah. He, he said those words. And let's use today as an example. You had one of the best prospects of the last 20 years, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. And you had yeah. Mr. Irrelevant, right? And I would say one defining characteristic of Brock Purdy, yeah. why Fred Warner, why George Kittle, why Christian McCaffrey, who are wired like Kyle Shanahan, Andy Reid, yeah. Bill Belichick, Addicts, Tom Brady, Paid Manning. Brock Purdy fits under that. Football is everything to him. Yeah. You know, it, it means absolutely everything to him. And that's the thing with Trevor Lawrence. He's so much more gifted than everyone else. Is there a little bit of a basketball element? Like his talent, 6'4, six, 6'5, six, good arm, naturally accurate, can move. It's easy. Showed up at Clemson in the middle of their dynasty, immediately starts. The other guy gets told to transfer. Brock Purdy's begging for scholarships, you know, yeah. comes third string. There's an element, and we've talked about this a lot before. Most of the quarterbacks that are having a lot of success are not the number one overall pick. Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck, but Peyton's even more of an example because he played for as long as he did, is an all time outlier. Most of the best quarterbacks are usually kind of random picks.